When it comes to COVID-19, are your national health managers trying to kill you or hurt you? Maybe not, but it sure seems that way. Come on, let's go take a look. Hello everyone, Dr. Chris Martinson here with your Uncommon Sense Show, your daily dose of Uncommon Sense, unnecessary death and suffering. That's what I'm calling this episode, and it's the vitamin D episode. I don't really know what else to tell you about it at this point besides the data is so damaging, I don't know what to do with it besides conclude that our system is really, really broken, or there's some other script running which has nothing to do with your health and wellness. But first, Let's start with our uncommon sense hero of the day. And you know why I'm calling it uncommon sense? Because common sense is just not common anymore. But here's a lady. This is Maureen. That's all we know her as. Uh, she had this really, uh, I think, pretty good point of view here. And uh, let's catch this. I think it's all ridiculous. We should never have been in lockdown. All the people who are vulnerable should have been helped and kept on safe. And all the rest of us, I'm 83. I don't give a sod. I look at it this way. I've not got all that many years left of me, and I'm not going to be fastened in a house when the government have got it all wrong. We need, how can we get the country on its feet, money-wise? Where's all the money? By the end of this year, there's going to be millions of people unemployed, and you know who's going to pay for it? All the young ones. Not me, because I'm going to be dead. <laughs> Yo, Maureen. So, yeah. Uh there really isn't a need for all these lockdowns at this point in time. I'm, I'm really convinced of that. And I'm going to just focus today around just one element of this story. We've got five or six elements that are similar, ranging from antivirals that are off the shelf, off patent, very simple that seem to work, to other uh, supplements and things. But let's just start here. Vitamin D. We've been on the vitamin D kick for a long time. This new study just comes out of Spain, and they discovered that over 80% of hospitalized COVID-19 patients have a vitamin D deficiency. Okay, so I know this just came out October 27th. Hey, that's today, but um, I guess over, over 80% of these patients, 200 patients in a hospital, have this vitamin D deficiency. They found, um, uh, let's see, I like this, uh, men had lower vitamin D levels than women. So for a long time, we've been struggling with why are men seemingly more impacted? Do they have more ACE2 receptors? Do they tend to smoke more? We don't know, right? Well, this is an explanation now, so this begins to make sense. So this is the easiest, simplest thing we can start with is vitamin D. Um, and by the way, uh, patients with lower vitamin D levels also had raised serum levels for inflammatory markers such as uh, ferritin and D-dimer. So if you don't have this vitamin D in your system, good chance, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to have a worst, worst case of the disease, a uh, worse run at it, maybe even death. Um, here's a study that came out, uh, it's in this uh, link down here in Science Direct. Uh, they did this when they were giving a big bolus of vitamin D to patients. Check this out. That's what they're calling an intervention was, um, high dose vitamin D. All right. Uh, so they followed patients for 36 plus or minus 17 days. Look at this. 82 and a half percent of participants in the intervention group where they gave vitamin D survived COVID-19 compared to only 44 in the comparator group, obviously, P.023, very significant finding. The full adjusted hazard ratio for mortality according to vitamin D3 supplementation was 0.11. Stop the presses. Hold on. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 0.11. That means there's an 89% improvement. You have 89% less chance of dying when you get a bolus of vitamin D. And these are people, by the way, who are hospitalized, they're coming in, they're not looking good. They, some of them they gave a big blob of vitamin D to, the rest didn't get that, and they're comparing these two groups. Look at that, P.003, highly significant. Okay, um, and let's see. Uh, finally, vitamin D supplementation was inversely associated with this OSCI score. And their conclusion is bolus vitamin D3 supplementation during or just before COVID-19 was associated in frail elderly. These are the, the, the people that Maureen was saying, hey, let's keep them locked away. Maybe not, we don't have to worry quite as much if, uh, if we use this vitamin D supplementation because it was associated with less severe COVID-19 and a better survival rate. Hmm, that seems really important there, wouldn't you think? So look at the curve off of this. This came out on uh, 13th of October. So, you know, we're 10 days ago, uh, 14 days ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, this comes out. 
Vitamin D and survival in COVID-19, uh, quasi-experimental study. Here again, they're looking at the intervention uh, with vitamin D bolus as compared to no vitamin D bolus. And look at this. These are the number of people. This is 100% of people surviving. This is 50% of people surviving. You can see here that the vitamin D group is doing way better than the non-vitamin D group in frail elderly patients who at 37 days of follow-up was basically 40% surviving. Bad, bad news. Uh, so they were looking at a very um, at-risk population, obviously, here. Okay, so given that, and I've got tons of other data going starting in, uh, starting all the way back in March, April, May, June, vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D. Now, here's the thing. You would think that given that we have data starting eight months ago now for vitamin D, that we would somewhere along the way that the national health authorities would pick up on that, but not if they're managers, not if they're bad managers. Let's go on our world tour and find out who's recommending vitamin D. Let's start in France. France is, uh, this just came this morning off of their uh, coronavirus uh, official government website. Here's the link up here. Um, and uh, they said, how can I protect myself from the virus? Well, it says uh, the virus doesn't spread its own. People who have the virus are the ones who spread it. Hmm, that's helpful. Therefore, the following measures can help protect yourself and others from the virus. So uh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna wash your hands, single use single use tissues, not those multi-use tissues, not those, <laughs> throw them away. Uh, cough and sneeze into your arm or into a tissue. Yeah, very helpful there, France. Uh, do not shake hands or greet people with kisses on the cheek. That's very anti-French of them to say that, but okay. Respect social distancing. Uh, you should remain further than a meter, one meter. So they're only half as safe as other people who call for two meters. Uh, wear a mask. And what, okay, that's not very helpful yet. What should you do if you are feeling ill? Well, if you have a cough or temperature, stay at home. Avoid contact with others. Call a doctor. That's it. And if it gets worse, go into the, into the hospital. Nothing in here says start taking vitamin D, start taking a lot of the other outpatient things we can talk about. But today we're just talking about vitamin D. So let's go now to the Pasteur Institute. Uh, see what they're saying here. And Oh, <laughs> look at this. There is currently no specific treatment with demonstrated efficacy against COVID-19. Remember, COVID-19, the disease, SARS-CoV-2, the virus. There are things with demonstrated efficacy. I would consider a hazard ratio reduction of to 0.11, an 89% improvement in mortality outcomes, and lower um, uh, scores for, uh, this is sickness. That's what the OSCI score is, is all the different um, ways you would measure symptoms, symptom severity, and things like that. So to say there's no demonstrated efficacy is not correct. And by the way, this isn't just for uh, vitamin D. We have lots of other things that have demonstrated efficacy against COVID-19. So this is actually bad information. It's badly out of date, but still, um, and by the way, this shows you I searched for the word vitamin in their entire document here and came up with a zero, zero out of zero. No, no vitamins need, need apply in the French protocol. What the heck, French, France, what's going on there? Uh... Yeah, so instructions in France. I have symptoms, cough, fever that remind me of COVID-19. I stay at home. I avoid contact with others. I get in touch with my doctor who can offer me a consultation and a diagnostic test based on the symptoms I have. And then if I have breathing difficulties, I go here and I just avoid contact with people around me. In other words, go home, suffer, and stay afraid because there's nothing you can do. It's just nothing out there. Well, what about the NIH? So NIH has a, a big, giant document, really comprehensive, a lot of pages and hundreds of pages. Uh, so this is what it looks like when you download it, which I just did on uh, 1026 was the download data for this thing. Uh, this is the NIH, horrifically out of date, horrifically out of date. So let's go to their uh, treatment protocol figure one in this. I think this comes from page 51 of that big, massive document. So what's the panel recommending? Well, it's based on disease severity. It gets more severe as you go this way. Let's see, if you're not hospitalized or even you're hospitalized, but you don't require supplemental oxygen, what do they say here? Well, there's no specific antiviral or immunomodulatory therapy recommended. Not even vitamin D with its 89% hazard reduction ratio. By the way, if remdesivir had done anything like that, you'd all be getting like some in the mail from the government. You'd be getting shots. You'd have to line up for your remdesivir treatments and all this. Uh, so what they say is they see the remdesivir section for a discussion on the data. Here they go, remdesivir, remdesivir. Oh, look, remdesivir, if, if you require our supplemental oxygen, here you go, we're gonna give you remdesivir. That's it, that's what we think we can do. Stop, remdesivir does nothing. It's a waste of time. It has serious side effects. It's awful. Vitamin D, 
not that bad. Uh, so at any rate, uh, this is awful. This is this is horribly out of date, and and I just have to say what they have. In fact, I, I got a special guest to chime in today. Uh, uh, he he read over these. Uh, same uh, treatment guidelines from the NIH. And let's turn now to my good buddy, Charles Darwin. Charles, what do you think about those uh, NIH treatment guidelines? Yeah? Are we? Yeah. <laughs> He's all for them. Because uh, this is how we're going to take ourselves out uh, by being stupid. This is, not, this is not, there's no common sense to be found in here. This is horrifically bad. We know so much more than this table suggests at this point in time. And in no small measure, vitamin D ought to be creeping in there. What about the UK? How's the UK doing on this whole thing? Well, uh, let's see here. They say there's currently no specific treatment for coronavirus. I think they meant COVID-19. Antibiotics do not help as they do not work against viruses. Actually, that's false. That's not true. We've presented all that data as well. uh, There's very strong antiviral effects of some antibiotics. We don't know why yet, but it seems to be the case. Um, treatment aims to relieve the symptoms while your body fights the illness. Great, then vitamin D, that would be uh, approved treatment, right? And what do you need to do? Yeah, you got to stay in isolation away from other people until you recover. That's it. Just stay home and suffer. So let's go a little deeper, though, because what is the clinical management in the UK? Uh, Again, no vitamin appears anywhere in their entire treatment guide document at this point in time. Uh, And... Let's go down into that just a little deeper, just to find out what they do think, uh, think about early stage stuff or, or even later stage. How do you treat this? What could you possibly do? They say, well, COVID-19 infection may present with mild, moderate, or severe illness. Thanks for that. Yeah, could do that. Um, the latter includes severe pneumonia, ARDS, sepsis, septic shock, stuff like that. Okay. Early recognition of suspected patients allows timely initiation of infection prevention and control measures. Sounds good. What are you going to give them? Vitamin D? Let's see. Uh, that's nothing there. For those with mild illness, hospitalization may not be required unless there's a concern for rapid deterioration. All patients discharged home should be instructed to return to hospital if they develop any worsening of the illness. Nothing in here about vitamin D. Nothing. Zero. Um, so, uh, so I go then in the UK to NICE, NICE, uh, National Institute for Healthcare and Excellence, uh, Health and Care Excellence, and they say here, uh, that they, they, updated this on June of 2020, and they say there's no evidence to support taking vitamin D supplements to specifically prevent or treat COVID-19. Well, now there is, and I know something about websites because I operate one. Uh, You can update them really rapidly, like in minutes if you need to. They last updated their guidance on vitamin D from the 29th of June. We have so much data now. It's even coming out in newspapers, right? Uh, So... Um, maybe they're just short-staffed at NICE. They just, uh, they just haven't had a chance to really get there. Let's, uh, oh, yeah, no, let, we just checked in here. This is, this is their budget. Uh, <laughs> look at this. They're spending uh, uh, 68.2 million pounds, approximately 90 million U.S. dollars. They have 680 employees. What are you guys doing there, guys and gals? What are you doing? You're not... I'm just a guy who's got to go feed cows a little later. I'm pretty sure somewhere in your 680 employees, somebody could scan the webs, the interwebs, and maybe find some stuff out about vitamin D, but you're not doing that. And I have to ask why. I really have to ask what the hell's going on. But I got to be honest, you know, the, uh, uh, the UK is doing a very good job because they have taken some very proactive measures to help stop the spread of SARS-CoV-2 as a virus. And uh, here's one of their more, more bold, more proactive things. They're saying that UK couples who live apart, who aren't in each other's uh, safety bubble, support bubble, or whatever they call it, uh, they're banned from having sex under new COVID-19 rules. So I'm glad that they've, the UK found some people to make this rule and spend time figuring out how they're going to make this rule or punish it if it's not uh, adhered to. But meanwhile, they couldn't be bothered to figure out how to uh, scan the webs and find out uh, what the latest guidance is on vitamin D, because vitamin D is very, very important in this story. So let's review, though. Maybe this is a complicated subject. Maybe I'm making it too simple. So let's review it very quickly. Uh, Vitamin D summary is this. Um, The downsides are none, zero, nil, nada, rien, nothing, zilch, nicht, and um, in Japanese... Chinese and Hindi. That that's that. Those are the downsides in every language I could I could pull up right there. The upsides of vitamin D supplementation would be you avoid death, uh, you have less disease, um, you save patients. That's good. Uh, improved quality of life. That that's one. Um, 
healthier bones, not a bad outcome. And lessened flu complications too. I'm not showing that data here, but it's, it's, it, vitamin D is like this wonder drug for all kinds of things related to immunomodulation. And it's an immunomodulatory uh, compound with wonderful effects. Meanwhile, the NIH says that no specific antiviral or immunomodulatory therapy is recommended. That's what they said right here, okay? All right, so uh, given all of that, I just have to ask uh, the question forms here. What the F is going on? What the F is going on? The state of things. Here's the state of things in regard to vitamin D uh, and other uh, proactive outpatient, uh, proactive treatments you could do. Uh, the United States, go home and suffer. Wait for a vaccine. Uh, France, go home and suffer. Nothing you can do. UK, stay home and suffer and uh, also don't have sex. Uh, and uh, everybody basically saying, yeah, that's it. That's the state of the art. Nothing, nothing you can do. Don't worry your pretty little head except stay home and be fearful. But when you do get sick, come to us and trust that even though we completely dropped the ball, on bringing you the latest best data on how you could easily, cheaply, safely, and effectively treat your COVID-19 or limit its impact. Uh, trust us that when you get to the hospital, we got it covered there. I got to tell you, um, this is a, a reaction video of me um, looking at the state of things right now. I, I can't really make sense of it. Um, it's just, it's not good. I, honestly, people, there's only there's no good explanations here for why this is where we're at right now. There's no good explanation for why you're hearing about this data from me. There's no good explanation for why we don't have uh, a, a a comprehensive and international and global vitamin D campaign ongoing right now that would help um, everybody understand what the issues are and to get vitamin D in their system. So if you aren't taking vitamin D, or now that we're entering in here in the northern latitudes, when you're entering winter. Make sure you're taking vitamin D every day, right? Um, so by now you're probably thinking, oh my God, I don't know what, what is even going on here anymore. We don't know, right? So you're thinking, what should I do? Hey, I took last week off because we just presented our seminar over this weekend at Peak Prosperity. It was amazing. We got just 10 out of 10s. People were just, they, they called it the bomb on steroids, times 10, all that stuff. It was really, it was very good. So you can find uh, a summary recap of that here at this URL, peakprosperity.com slash recap. And by the way, um, something that I put in there that I'm not willing to put out on YouTube for a variety of reasons uh, was I shared in more detail than ever than my own personal treatment regimen um, and what I would follow, you know, one to avoid getting sick, which includes this vitamin D right here. This is good stuff. Hazard ratio 0.11, 89% lower chance of, of badness happening to you. Um, also, if I suspected I had been exposed, what I would do then and then if I indeed developed COVID, the disease. SARS-CoV-2, I have respect for it. COVID doesn't, I'm not nearly as afraid of it as I used to be for all that reason. So uh, come check this out if you want. It, it's a, it was a great seminar. We covered all kinds of stuff. Well, you know, we got Federal Reserve policy in there and monetary stuff and what you do with money and then really exciting sessions with, we got Joel Salatin on there, the, the America's farmer, um, seeing frog farm people. So everything from farming to finance to high finance to emotional preparations for how you can prepare for this future that's coming because something's happening here with respect to vitamin D and things like that, which tells me that whatever scripts are being run don't involve your health and your safety. That, that's not number one in this story. Something else is running this story at this point in time and a little bit too much. We're hearing a lot about the great reset uh, that everybody seems so excited about. It, the Davos crowd, that's the World Economic Forum, the, the IMF, uh, other places like that. Something's playing out here. It, it, maybe it's got to do with politics, elections, money, resets. I don't know what's happening, but I can tell you this has nothing to do with data, has nothing to do with common sense, has nothing to do with your health at this point in time. Sadly, that's the case. And by the way, any medical staff who are watching this right now, if you have COVID patients coming in and you're not giving them a high bolus of vitamin D on, on entrance to the hospital, you're making a mistake at this point in time. And that's uh, very clear and demonstrably true because the downsides, again, the big goose egg. The upsides, pretty dramatic. So with that, that's all I got for today. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.